Hey guys, it's Queen. I recently had the amazing opportunity to ask SimGuru Graham some of your questions about the Sims 3 Island Paradise via Skype. I don't want to waste too much time, so we're going to jump right into the interview. So the questions are, they're a little all over the place. I tried to organize them the best of my, to the best of my abilities, but it's just a lot of random things that me and my subscribers, <laughs> we kind of wanted to know. All right, so the first question was, um, is to you and it's about you it's kind of what was the easiest and hardest part of about developing island paradise oh boy um <laughs> the hardest part for me personally was the houseboats um it was my kind of one big feature on island paradise mm -hmm. and uh honestly i'm happy it worked out that way um i started working on scuba diving originally as well uh and then i handed that off to somebody else and i'm so glad i did because the houseboats uh, needed a lot of love and attention and you know uh -huh. for anybody who's kind of familiar with the game I think uh, they'll recognize the idea of taking one of the lots that just exists in a world and then having it route around and go anywhere it wants to the same way a sim does is a little mind-blowing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so you know that had a lot of challenges that came with it uh, I loved working on it because you know I love being challenged I'd rather kind of be under the gun at work and you know, do a lot of kind of crazy tasks. So the houseboats were a lot of fun, just a great personal challenge. Um, the easiest thing about this expansion, uh, probably the brainstorming initially, because, you know, when you think about Island Paradise or, you know, what you'd want to do in a fun tropical destination, uh, there's just so many things that immediately leap to mind. So mm -hmm. it was great thinking about the expansion. It was really hard cutting it down to what we could actually fit into the game. <laughs> uh, so so you guys didn't like go to some random island to kind of, um, I don't know, help you like, um, I don't know, just take a I nice wish. vacation for <laughs> inspirational purposes. Like that would have been awesome. Uh, if, if only. No, we don't get to do that. Uh, I'd love to do some uh, actual on-location research at some time for an expansion. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. So um, we all know that a lot of the store worlds um, are based off of real-life locations. And um, also Starlight Shores from The Sims 3 Showtime has this Hollywood, L.A. kind of vibe. Um, yep. Is there any inspiration, real-life inspiration be behind Isla Paradiso? At all? You know, I, I wouldn't uh, pinpoint any particular location. You know, it does have a very strong Caribbean theme. Um, so kind of that entire region. Mm -hmm. And I think we uh, we actually looked at uh, Rio de Janeiro as uh, kind of a source for, you know, the overall theme or the feel of it. But there's no particular or excuse me, particular geographical elements that, you know, tie it to one, you know, spot. Uh, it's really taking the themes of those areas and mixing them into the world. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So um, one of the things we were all like really, really excited about when the trailer and um, the trailer and the producer walkthrough came out, and it's the 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 giant squid that comes out of the water <laughs> and sharks. Um, are things like sharks and giant squids and other worlds too, like Sunset Valley and Riverview? So uh, the sharks won't appear in other worlds unless you place down the spawners. So if you actually, if you went into Edit Town, um, they have their own kind of exclusive spawners. And you could put those on the water surface if you wanted to have sharks somewhere else. Uh, the Kraken, though, that gigantic squid that comes out and attacks boats, uh, that will show up in any world. So oh. uh, obviously you can take the boats out onto any ocean that you want to. And while you're out there, the Kraken does have a chance of appearing. Okay, <laughs> alrighty. That's really nice to know. Like, you can die <laughs> very easily. Okay, so what are some of the ways uh, Sims can find Uncharted Islands? So the Uncharted Islands are super unique. Um, the great thing about them is that each one has a different way of unlocking it. And uh, probably the first one that any player is going to stumble across, you know, when they're first playing in Isla Paradiso and they take a boat mm -hmm. out into the water, um, as they get near one of these islands, it's actually just going to unlock that way for you. You know, the fog lifts and it actually becomes your property. Okay. Uh, but as you kind of progress through them, they get more and more challenging and have unique ways of unlocking each one. So, you know, you may befriend the mermaid and eventually as they uh, gain the trust with you, uh, they'll lead you to their hidden island. Uh, or you can go scuba diving and actually swim through an underwater cave and you'll surface on the ocean right next to one of these islands. Um, you know, each one has a unique scenario like that for finding it, which is really cool. Okay, alrighty. So speaking of mermaids, um, will, we be, will we be able to create a mermaid and create a sim? 
you can't initially create a mermaid and create a sim. So if you're just starting out in the world or making your household, um, you can't make them there. Uh, there are a few unique ways to have a sim in your household, or sorry, a mermaid in your household. Uh -huh. um, you will be able to go back and customize them. So once you have a mermaid, you can take them back into create a sim and there you'll be able to change things like their tail color, their scale colors. Um, you know, if it's a female mermaid, kind of that seashell top, uh -huh. uh, you can change that around. Um, so you will be able to customize them. It's just not initially in Create a Sim. Okay. All right. And do they have some sort of uh, special powers? Like the genies, they can uh, clean, the f clean the house, which is amazing. I love that power. Are there any special powers for mermaids at all? Well, they aren't exactly uh, magical like the genies are per se, but they uh -huh. do have great advantages. So um, anytime you're in the water, which is obviously one of the core parts of this expansion pack, um, the mermaids are going to absolutely be the best at it. So if they're swimming, if they're scuba diving, if they're snorkeling, mm -hmm. um, they're going to go faster. They're going to be better at it. Uh, they're also a little safer in some of these situations as well. So sharks won't fight them, for example. They, they don't have to worry about that kind of presence underwater. Um, and if you're an evil mermaid, you can actually summon other sharks and make an area more dangerous for other sims by uh, blowing on this conch shell, which is uh, pretty cool. <laughs> so a mermaid <laughs> with the evil trait is what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Alrighty, cool, cool. Um, now, cooking is my favorite skill in this whole <laughs> little game ever. Of anything involving cooking, I love. So are there any new foods and recipes at all? Uh, unfortunately, no new recipes, but there are new foods. So um, we were just talking about the mermaids. They actually have uh, kelp that they can harvest underwater. And uh, the mermaids like eating those, and they can actually eat fish you know, straight after uh, catching them from their inventory as well. Uh -huh. uh, so that's a cool little thing with them. Um, but then for other Sims, um, the new foods actually really come from the resorts. Um, so mm -hmm. there's a new food stand there. There's the new buffet tables. And uh, you'll find new, new food to eat there. So kind of, you know, with the tropical theme, um, if you go and you order a drink at the pool bar, it's going to come in like a, either a coconut or a pineapple, you know, hollowed out. Uh -huh. the drink. Um, so you will find some new foods in there. They're just not recipes. Okay, that's, that's cool. All right, so speaking of the resorts, um, now we know there are the resort towers. Will all Sims, no matter which room they're checked into, whether it's a VIP room or whatever, will they all use the resort tower? No, so that's, that's kind of the great thing about the VIP rooms. Um, you know, if you want to be on a resort and you don't want your Sims staying in the tower or kind of disappearing into that place, um, that's what the VIP rooms are for. So you can pay a little bit extra money uh, you get your VIP suite, and then that has everything that your sim needs. You know, uh, the bedroom, the bathroom, and they're usually pretty luxurious, too. So it's kind of the most fun place to stay on the resort. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we all wanted to know, like, I got a lot of questions about this. Um, a, a lot of us, really, including myself, we really, 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 really want to, you know, just jump right into the game and uh, create a resort because that is just, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has that um, open for business kind of vibe to it. So, so yeah. will we be able to jump into the game without using cheats, like, to create a resort? About what I'm trying to say is how much will it cost, like, around how, is it expensive? No, so it, it's it's actually reasonable. It's, it's not too bad. Um, and that's actually one of the really nice things. If you decide to play in Isla Paradiso, uh, it comes with three resorts that are already in there. Um, but one of those three resorts is actually kind of in foreclosure when you start the game. So it's a little rundown, a little downtrodden. Um, but there's an opportunity on it where, you know, because it's in foreclosure, you can pick it up. Um, it's either very cheaply or free. Uh, and you can actually start running that immediately. And then you can kind of bring that back to life, revitalize it, refurnish it, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, turn it into a great resort. Um, so if you immediately want to get into that system, that's probably the best way to go about doing it. Uh, if you want to build your own resort from scratch, mm -hmm. what you would do is uh, acquire a private lot. So, you know, for the cost of, say, purchasing an empty lot in any of the worlds, uh, which is, you know, fairly cheap, just a couple thousand uh, simoleons. Mm -hmm. um, you can acquire that and change it into a resort, which will give you the very basics for what you need to run a resort. And then from there, of course, you'll have to have the money to keep building on it and upgrading it. But, 
yeah, if you want to get into it quickly, you'll be able to. Okay, that's that's really, really nice to know, because that's <laughs> something I, I'm going to do the first time I play ever. Okay, so <laughs> last question, last question. Okay. And uh, this is kind of for me. Is there any possible way <clears throat> that you can create a time machine and just like transport me and a couple other shimmers <laughs> to June 25th? Like, because I haven't been this excited since showtime. Like, it's just, yeah. Yeah. And if you know, not, I, and if not, can we work on it together? Because I'm going to have to go back and check, but I don't think the time machine and sensory ambitions has a, a June 25th date in it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit longer now. Alrighty. And that's you know, pretty I'm much sure all the questions. I've also heard that... about on origin. If you pre-order there, you get that carnival costume pack. Um, uh -huh. And that's actually pretty sweet. So uh, I, you know, talking to the cast artists, they tell me it's actually some of the most detailed uh, kind of outfits and headdresses they've ever made. So they actually look really neat in game. Okay. Uh, but the interesting thing about Origin today, we're kind of announcing a new offer or deal on it. Um, so from now, uh, when it goes live today until June 21st, uh, if we reach 4,000 pre-orders during that period of time, um, everybody who has pre-ordered the game on Origin um, you know, at any point, it's going to get a free copy of Barnacle Bay along with Island Paradise, um, which is actually a really good world for the boats and stuff. It's it works great for it, so it's pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> that's that is sweet. That is really awesome, and they fit perfectly <laughs> together. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you. That's that's it, I guess, right? Awesome. Yeah, and uh, I guess we'll see you next on uh, June eighteenth for the live right. broadcast. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. Cool. Thanks. All right, bye. bye. Did you guys hear that? So from now until June 21st, if 4,000 pre-orders of The Sims 3 Island Paradise are sold, those that pre-order will receive a free copy of Barnacle Bay. Barnacle Bay was the first world that ever came out in The Sims 3 store that you had to pay for. Um, and seriously, it is one of my favorite worlds. I've always said this. Um, it has a really, really great piratey theme to it. And um, it looks beautiful. And it also has a really, really nice um, story to the whole entire neighborhood. So it's a good deal. And to be honest with you, 4,000 pre-orders are going to come pretty quickly. I mean, think of how many simmers in the world there are. You know, like... 4,000 pre-orders of Island Paradise from now until June tw 21st. That's a whole two weeks. So, um, you know, I definitely recommend you guys hop on that and uh, pre-order the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I love you guys. I will talk to you later. You all have a super fantastic, awesome, splendid, amazing day. Bye, guys.